thank you so much for being here. It's Finavar from my studio in uh, Galway, and uh, we are going to start Facebook Live uh, with the title is mm, Vibrant Red Canvas. And we are going to work together on the small project with a lot of natural elements and really beautiful color combination, which was inspired by my friend Ania Ivanowska from Poland. She made a tag which was red and turquoise and it was absolutely beautiful. And I was thinking, mm, this combo is beautiful. So I really wanted to make something similar. So um, as I took the inspiration, my turquoise turned into a little bit different color. It is more blue. But uh, I've seen today that you liked it and uh, you really think um, this combination is beautiful as well. So thank you, uh, Anya. Thank you, Anai, that's her uh, nickname, for this beautiful inspiration. And we are starting now. Okay. <laughs> so, um, as I told you, I was so inspired by uh, Anya's project. She made beautiful tag with the a butterfly on it and the background was full of texture and she made this combination of the red and turquoise and I was thinking like, I want to do something very similar with the color combination I wanted to make something with the texture as well so I was thinking which colors I can combine and I decided to go with impasto paint so I'm going to use poppy red and I'm going to uh, use Azure together with a little bit of white, snow white in pasto. So these will be the background basic colors for the project. And of course, there's a little bit of gesso as well, just in case. Uh, and <laughs> I've got a selection of different elements here. You can see I've prepared some of the mechanicals, rusty ones and regular ones. I've got some elements made from resin from my mold. They will be, <laughs> some of them are broken, but doesn't matter. Uh, so we've got all these elements which will help me to create the composition. But because this is really autumn inspired project, I also have leaves. If you've seen my Instagram account, this is... <laughs> what is in my garden uh, is Japanese maple. So this one is taken directly from, um, from the tree, which is outside. So this also is included in the project. If you can see, the leaves are here and they are beautiful accents of color. So as answering the question in pasto, it's very thick matte acrylic paint, which you can use to uh, layer one on another and the uh, colors are going to cover each other completely once the paint is dry. It's thick, great quality uh, acrylic paint. You can also use it instead of gesso because it's very sticky and it's going to help you um, make your uh, project matte for the next layers. So I'm going to use that in my project as well. Um, as you can see, I've made some stenciling before and I have prepared the canvas already to save you watching that step. So you can see I've got uh, the texture ready. I used my stencil from the uh, last uh, release of the stencils. This, this is the one that is inspired by the Art uh, Nouveau style. And I've used simply modeling paste. You can see my jar is very old and quite empty. So this was modeling paste applied through the stencil and dried completely. And uh, this, um, this uh, is completely dry and flexible. So now I can start working on the bottom layers. As it's not probably a surprise, I will need to start with the painting. And of course, we need to paint the canvas red, uh, with the red color. I'm not adding anything else to this paint. I'm just going to use uh, poppy red in pastel. This is the, exactly the color that you could, <laughs> sorry, you could see on the uh, canvas as it is. It's not a mix. It's directly from the tube. Dries like that. It's super thick paint 
So if you feel this is a little bit too uh, dry on your brush, you can add some water. The advantage of impasto is um, making um, everything match quickly, just like gesso, but of course it contains tons of pigment. And that means this is great quality paint. So also similar to gesso, it dries quite quickly. So you don't have to wait for a long time to continue to next steps. I have to dry it before I'm going to put layers on the top. But as you can see, just a bit of paint goes quite a long way. So I'm preparing my super vibrant red background. And I know this is a very contrasting combo of colors. This is delicate blue, um, I would say maybe sky blue color uh, combined with a very vibrant red. But remember, these colors are the opposite sides of the color wheel, so they are really beautifully uh, contrasting. Um, the trick is when you work with these kind of colors and you want to avoid mud, you can just make sure one color is completely dry before you apply another. This way, everything will stay nice and clean. And um, I'm sure you can imagine what happens if you put <laughs> blue and red together. It's going to be kind of brown, not always the most beautiful brown. So to avoid the problem, if you would like to make sure everything will go completely safe, just dry first layer before playing with other colors on the top. A little bit more of the red paint. So, so far we've got layer of modeling paste uh, with the stencil. And after drying, we are adding first layer of paint in pasta to create the background. This is my step to start working on the color palette. This is really easy and fun to make. And you can see with the brush, I'm trying to go really deep in between the textures because I was quite heavy handed with the modeling paste. So the texture is really dimensional. I'm sure you can see it. Now I have to take my heat gun and dry it. In the meantime, I will work on the nice shade of the blue. Okay. That should be fine. I'm starting drying. I'm going to work with azure and also at the same moment, I'm going to add some white to make sure this is going to turn, sorry, it's going to be a little bit lighter. These paint, paints, they dry a little bit darker than you can see them in the tube. So I really want this delicate blue color. So you can see I was adding a little bit of the uh, liquid color um, fluid medium. So this is the one which goes together with the li uh, liquid acrylics, but you can add it to any paste. For example, the rust paste or any um, paint, because this is like um, the base of the acrylic paint, which is extending the working time. As you can see, it's helping when the paint is getting thicker to add more liquid uh, to it without changing the quality of the paint. So I've got my blue. And now when this is still drying, I will work on coloring some of the embellishments that will go on the top. So I need to get these elements, which are supposed to be blue, and I want them to look really crisp. So I need to paint them separately. So I will be uh, now adding color to my flowers and my resin elements. And in the meantime, the paint will be drying. So this is just me and um, the uh, impasto paint here, this one, on the top of these little guys. And now a bit of magic. Let's hope this magic will work. Yeah. The 
extra much so i won't make my background too dirty and i continue drying okay so i can put it in the warm place for drying and in the meantime i will be working on the canvas a little bit Behind me, there is a fireplace. <laughs> you can't see it, but there is. I'm checking if it is dry. Seems to be. And we are going to use the same paint to accent the textures. I'm sure you can see that in the background. I was rubbing leftovers of my paint to add the accents. So you can just do it with your fingers, really, if you prefer this way. I know this is very messy. but this would be the most efficient way for me to do it. I have leftovers of the paint and now I'm rubbing that into the details to highlight the beauty of the stencil. Of course, perfection is overrated, so you don't have to worry that um, Maybe it is not going to be 100% crisp. Remember, a lot of that background is going to get covered as well. And it's really up to you how much of the blue you want to see. So now we've got the beginning of our combo of the colors. And you can see what I was uh, explaining about impasto. They are completely permanent after drying but also when they are dry you can layer lighter color on the top of the darker and still the results will be great they will be covering each other perfectly i'm thinking it's almost ready of course, you can do it with the brush, but this is more fun. <laughs> Let's have a look at the background. I think it looks almost like patina on the top. I will use some baby wipes to clean it off. Okay, in the meantime, I'm going to take care of this one. It's going to be the part of the composition here under the... Um, elements and i don't want the color to be too saturated so i'm taking some water on my brush and i will just go quickly like a wash of color on the top thank you you're the best okay so the wash of color <laughs> whatever i had left on my brush cleaning that off quickly Perfect, cleaning my hands, and we can start working on the composition. In the meantime, uh, my elements, uh, the ones I painted, they are drying. You can see it's all dry on my hands as well. I will just dry this one as well for a moment. And let's have a look. So what do we need? We need to get some longer sticks to start the composition and then we are going to place natural elements such as leaves uh, on the top of that and then finally together with the mechanicals we are going to get this dimensional composition ready so i hope that uh, you like this solution for me the first step is going to be finding some sticks and i told you that this project is inspired by nature really um autumn colors were all were on my mind when i was working on it so i've got leaves from my garden and i've got some sticks from my garden also the set of embellishments i was showing you and the photo the photo i've got today is quite long so it will take um, a lot of nice space on the top, just like this one. So my composition has to be more uh, going from one side to another. So I can uh, easily um, see my sticks. Okay, this one is very complicated one. So I have to probably 
clip it a little bit to make it shorter. They're really cute sticks. This one doesn't need to be here. You can see what I'm trying to do just to make sure they will be nicely visible on both sides, checking if they're not too long. Probably not. Here is the photo I wanted to use. Here's the vintage photo. You can see how long it is. And then we start with the biggest element. It's a part of the cheap word doily. And the question about the leaves, I will be talking about the leaves in a moment, but these ones, no, these are taken directly from my garden. And um, if you want a little bit, bit of the curl that you can see here, you need to have them naturally drying on your project. If you want them completely flat, uh, you need to dry them first. So, gluing. First of all, we are going to use something uh, for uh, putting everything together. Together. So I'm going to use some heavy body gel. Again, you can see it's very dirty. And these are basically almost just like leftovers I had in the jar, but it's still plenty to finish the project. Okay, step number one, big doily. That is going to go under the photo. And then I'm going to arrange the sticks using the same heavy body gel. It doesn't have to be super clean because it will go under the paint as well. But make sure you're pressing things down so it has a really a chance to stick properly. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think this one is a little bit too big. Perfect. Now this one, same story. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. You know, inspiration is everywhere. And of course, for this project, my biggest inspiration was the color combo and the nature. Because I was lucky to spend some time in the beautiful park, looking at the leaves and when I came back home, I really wanted to work with that concept as well. So here it is, just, you know, from nowhere, basically. But that's how inspiration works. You just see some things and then they blend in your head into this idea that you've got. And then everything starts to work. Okay, let's see how this fits. Perfect. So again, we are using heavy body gel to add elements to the project okay now we are going to add the embellishments and then we've got two kinds of embellishments we've got uh, rusty ones and they're going to stay rusty they are the mechanicals and we've got uh, the painted ones and together with that we're going to apply the leaves Okay, they should be dry already. I've got my elements here waiting. Now I will try to find the best options for them to stay. This one will be on the bottom. That was place for that. Then I can use one of the flowers on the side. Right, you can see how vibrant the colors are now. Okay, so we make like a nice flowery composition and then we can balance that with the flower on the other side. That looks perfect. For the good measure, cog going with the cog. And then if you want to add something special, you can always add one more in here. Looks really nice. So this is the combination I wanted to have this way the uh, cogs make kind of triangle and then the flowers make kind of triangle attracting attention on the photo so for now i'm going to put these big elements in and now before i'm going to stick everything together completely i need to think about other embellishments as well so now i think this is stunning but it needs a little bit of white washing so it's going to look more natural I will be able still to move these elements if I want to, uh, but 
to give it a little bit of the whitewash, you can now go back to white gesso or to uh, white impasto paint and give it a little bit of the background wash. This is the next step. I'm going to use my white impasto. Okay, let's have a look. A little bit of the white wash on the top of everything. I didn't stick this one yet because I want to put some leaves under. Oops, probably you can't see anything. And you are too polite to tell me to move. <laughs> it's working with impasto, it's just so easy. Like you don't have, oh, well, you don't have to worry about all these um, imperfections because it really works almost like um, gesso. So you can just focus on layering and adding more of the elements. Okay. So this wash is going to be one of my background steps, but after that, it's going to put it all nicely together. If you want to, you can add a bit of that color on the background as well. I'm trying to save time and not drying the layer. <laughs> it's much easier when your sticks are glued down and not moving. But please forgive me, I'm trying to save the time. I'm sure you can see what I'm doing. I'm just giving it a nice white wash. If you want to add more of the white to the sticks, my were quite green, which is not really my color palette. You can now change that and try not to put too much because we don't want to repaint. We just want to uh, add the delicate touches. Okay. After this, we will be able to dry it. And if you will by any chance feel that you put too much of the white. No worries, you can always go back with the blue paint on the top and add more to it. So this is really safe process. Let me check with the photo. I think that is a very good start. Perfect. I will dry it just a little bit. And if you have a closer look, you will see that I've used some of the splatters as well in the background. This is going to give me um, some more natural look. It's more like galaxy now. <laughs> so I'm putting more of the water on the brush. I'm sure you can see what I'm doing. Right. And then adding some splatters. And of course, before any other painting, it's good to dry the splatters so they are not going to smudge by accident. Okay, now we've got the background ready. I have to give it a good dry. So you were asking me if the leaves I'm, I was using for the composition were dry. And the truth is they were half dried. I just, call, I just uh, collected them. And uh, after that, I let them sit on my table for a moment or two so they started to dry so this way they got more like natural curly look you can see what is happening here if you prefer to have them completely flat this is what you can do you just take the leaf that was dried in the book and they are going to be of course a little bit delicate but you don't have to worry too much because they are going to be on the canvas together with other elements. So you can uh, just mix them and match them the way 
that you like. So as you can see, I was also drying some of the leaves in the book for this purpose. And I'm ready to put the composition together. So the idea is there will be some leaves going on the sides together with the metal leaves. So it's going to be interesting combination of the colors. So let's say this one is going here and for the extra pops, I can add this one. Just how stunning it is. I just love it. And um, maybe for good measure, this one will go here. Of course, from this point, you should not really use your heat gun that much because those poor leaves, they will probably never survive uh, proper drying. But as you can see, my gluing technique is not too sophisticated. I'm just making a big blob of gel and I'm placing them wherever I want them to stay. Again, checking with my photo. Really nice. Adding the missing embellishments, so the metal leaves, maybe a little bit more here. Again, checking. You can see how, I, how much time I really spent on measuring before I would glue it all together. Hmm, maybe a little bit of the smaller one on this side. Oh, perfect. I have one more I can put here. Um, if you're wondering how long you need to dry the leaves, it all depends if you let them dry naturally or do you want to help them a little bit. I took these leaves in the morning and I put them in the book and then I place it on my stove, uh, which some of you probably know already. Is hot all the time. So they are basically dried completely uh, by this time. Okay, so I'm adding all the missing embellishments now. And on the original one, when they got curly, I was spraying them with the mud varnish. This is the mud varnish I was using. So they were not drying uh, completely the way that would happen in nature. And I'm going to do that the same on this project as well. Now I can see where to put my big embellishment. Yeah, here. And basically now I'm just putting all these elements together. All these elements that I wanted to have on my project are coming together nicely. I was planning to also put a butterfly here. So it's going to look like autumn butterfly, which is kind of a solution. Oh, this gel is so dry. Okay. And I can see I need more of the gel in this spot. So this is almost ready for the smallest beads and pieces. So to just put it all together for those of you who joined us just a moment ago. First, we took the stencil, this one. And using modeling paste, we created the background texture. Then, when it was dry, we would paint the background with the red impasto paint, which is very much. And then, when it was dry, I rubbed a mix of white and blue impasto, so the perfect sky blue color, on the top of it with my fingers to create a lovely blue texture. And I used the same paint to paint some of the, my uh, embellishments. When it was more or less dry, I brushed some of the white paint and I splattered. And then I started to add embellishments. I wanted to keep their natural color. So uh, we are on the stage when we have to add the finishing touches. I'm sure you can see where we are now. Okay. 
So I was thinking, because it's nature-inspired composition, it would be great if we can add something that is going to look more like berries or little fruit. <laughs> I would say berries is the best description. And uh, I've got this uh, here. These are red um, beads, glass beads. They're going to be my mini berries imitation. I've got um, some of the most amazing uh, pearls. This is uh, Frank's from Prima. They are really nice and round. They're going to be the big berries. And uh, if you don't have that, you can also try to look at the uh, pebbles. These are vintage colored pebbles. Some of them really look almost like berries. I'm really tempted to use some of these as well. So, of course, we are going to add uh, the beads. We are going to add some metallic finishing touches. And finally, we are going to finish with the tiniest little ones, so the micro beads. I take away the leaves because they are not needed anymore. I'm taking my heavy body gel again just to make sure I can stick. The biggest elements. So, for example, the big pebbles. And they usually look much better if you let them sit together in groups. So, let's say these are berries growing on this composition. They look amazing as they are. You don't really have to change the color if you don't want to. You can use the pearls, of course, as well. Pearls are really beautiful and big details. You can see I've used the pearls here and here. Oh, look, almost like blue nail polish. Hmm. <laughs> well, not really, but almost. I'm going to use more of these ones because I really love how beautiful vintage they are. And um, I'm trying to pick the colors that match my color composition. That is really fun to do and it's not complicated at all uh, the biggest problem is the color matching so when you have the right paints when you um, when you know which colors you can uh, use to great to get the um, combination you like with um, these techniques you can use any kind of embellishment because you will be able to repaint it really easily so I'm sure you can see this is very doable. Okay, maybe some mini berry on this side as well. Not too close to the photo because it won't fit. Okay, the last one. And now on the top of that, before we are going to uh, work with the beads, I want to add a little bit of the highlights. If you think that your blue is gone, you can now add a little bit of the metallic blue uh, wax, for example. So Blue Lagoon matches perfectly. Can you see that? This is just the perfect color for this combination. If you think that you like to add something more cold, um, like in the original one, I used old silver. It's going to give you some nice metallic highlights on the mechanical parts. And I hope you can see that. 
If you want to, you can always put it on the beads as well, but then I suggest using some smaller brush. So, for example, if I think I need a little bit more of the blue highlight somewhere now, I can take and rub it in the background with my fingers. It may be very useful in the places where by accident you put too much of the white paint. So I'm going to touch some parts of the project with the wax. This is Art Alchemy Metallic Wax Blue Lagoon, which is corresponding perfectly with my color palette. Maybe a little bit more here for the accents. It's also making this a bit shiny. A bit too much in here. No problem. Okay. And then on the mechanicals, I'm using a bit of the silver color. Just to give it more natural, um, metallic looking. Um, finish so it looks like it is really metal painted with the um... oh this one is almost invisible poor thing well we're going to add some highlight to the um, butterfly okay now if you would like to add a bit to the pebbles you can, especially maybe to this yellow one, they will look more matching. And I would love to add some touches on this metal flowers as well. Waxes are perfect finishing products. They are just great to add nice finishing look and they work really nicely together with the acrylic paints. Okay, now, once we have this done, the last step is going to be adding the little berries. <laughs> and the berries are on the top of our textures together with the photo. So the easiest way to get this done is to take some liquid gel medium, which is very sticky, for example, soft gloss gel. And as always, when I'm using this kind of liquid gel medium, I'm using the um, small brush so I can control where the textures are going. So you can see I'm quite generous. And now I can sprinkle my colors on the top. What is great about this project, it's really not complicated to do. You can uh, surely make this composition in many color combinations because this is um, just a set of techniques that uh, will make your work easier. I really highly recommend using impasta when you want to recolor some of your embellishments because they make your work very easy and you can easily use them instead of gesso. So if you need crazy color gesso, you can just use your impasto paint instead. Just sprinkling the berries. And finally, we are using the silver microbeads. This is the final look.
So this is almost like a little bit of the frost on the um, autumn leaves combination. Now, the only thing that I need to do is to put my photo in. And I will let it dry naturally because I don't want my leaves to be burned by accident. Okay. After I will finish, I can always spray them with the varnish or with the uh, fixative. Oh, I don't have enough space. I have to now move my flower a little bit more. I was measuring, measuring, and in the end, my measuring wasn't perfect enough. Okay. That is going to go here. Yes. So now, oh, sorry for the light. I will just take some 3D foam and place my photo in the right position. I think one more will be perfect. And it's ready. Let's compare. So we've got two almost identical canvases. So just to remind you what were the keys, <laughs> the most important product, these were the impasto paints. They were really making this project so easy to make. So we were using three colors, azure, poppy red, and uh, snow white. Second important product, it would be something sticky. So the heavy body gel that is the one that is helping you glue all these elements together it's still wet but i really prefer to dry it naturally because of the natural leaves third important product these were the elements of nature so leaves and sticks i have leftovers here which were uh, adding the extra dimension and the most beautiful look and finally, the embellishments, we were using combination of the pearls, uh, some of the pebbles. We were using the uh, micro beads and glass beads. And they were attached, sorry, with the soft gloss gel. So the one which is liquid and very easy to apply with your paintbrush. And one more important information would be uh, being careful about the leaves and if you plan to make them a little bit curly you can dry them on the project but make sure you will spray them with some kind of permanent hairspray or fixative or uh, spray varnish for the pictures that also works really well and um, if you would like to add some highlights you can absolutely easily Add it with some of the waxes. I added a tiny bit of the blue to the background, which was Blue Lagoon, and then Old Silver, which is nice uh, silver color. I think the process was um, simple and easy to follow. And if you have any questions, I'm very happy to answer. Uh, you can always leave me a comment on the, uh, in the comment section. And of course, I will uh, make sure this video is recorded so you can watch it later. I will take photos as well. 
and you will see both of the uh, projects together. So now I will just say my goodbye to you. I just let me give you a closer look at the project. Everything seems to be a little bit challenging now. <laughs> so I will say my goodbyes and thank you so much for watching. I have no idea what I have done, but the whole orientation of the video changed. Uh, so it was <laughs> uh, Finovar from the studio and Sharon from Prima Marketing doing our best to uh, give you a little bit of entertainment tonight and uh, inspiration for the future projects with a uh, huge thanks to all of you who came here. You were very quiet tonight and I think, uh, I'm not sure why, maybe you didn't have too many questions. Uh, yes, I know I'm upside down and I have no idea why. So. I will record it and we will see each other in the comments soon. Bye.